Welcome everybody to Storytime with Paul. I'm Paul. Tonight, the story that we're gonna be reading is a story that my kids really like called Frankenstein Makes a Sandwich and other stories you're sure to like because they're all about monsters and some of them are also about food by Adam Rex. All right, shall we begin? Frankenstein Makes a Sandwich. This is a long book, guys. I hope you like it. Frankenstein Makes a Sandwich. When Frankenstein prepared to dine on ham and cheese on wheat, he found instead he had no bread or mustard, cheese, or meat. What could he do, he thought it through, until his brain was sore, and thought that he ought to see what he could borrow from next door. His neighbors gawked as Frank Frankie walked the paths up to their porches. Each time he tried, the folks inside would chase him off with torches. A monster! Eek! The people shrieked. Oh, make him go away! The angry hordes unsheathed their swords, pulled pitchforks out of hay. They threw tomatoes, pigs, potatoes, loaves of moldy bread. And then a thought struck Frankenstein as pickles struck his head. It's true at first he thought the worst, his neighbors were so rude, but then he found that on the ground they'd made a mound of food. He piled it high and waved goodbye and shouted, thanks a bunch, then stacked it on a plate and ate a big disgusting lunch. The creature from the Black Lagoon doesn't wait an hour before swimming. The creature from the Black Lagoon went back into the bog too soon. Too soon, his doting mother cried. You just ate lunch. Come back inside. That Black Lagoon is dark and damp. You're going to get a stomach cramp. Just think of all you've had for lunch. A squid, three eels, Hawaiian punch, a bag of chips, a crab knish, a peanut butter jellyfish. You have to wait an hour or more, she shouted from the kitchen door. Alas, the creature never heard. He hadn't listened to a word. And rushing to the water's bank, he dived into the dismal dank. Then gurgled, got a cramp, and sank. The Phantom of the Opera can't get It's a Small World out of his head. It's a world gone crazy, a world gone wrong, when the Phantom can't even write a song. Sure, he's using his head, but what's stuck there instead? It's a small world after all. It's a small world after all. Angry cursing fills the hall. Now he's crawling up the wall. It's a small, small world. <clears throat> the Middle Witch Witch Watchers Club, a club which watches witches. Witch watchers hide in trees and shrubs or settle deep in ditches, and when they spot a witch, they look to see which witch it was. They check inside the Witch Watch book by Mitchell and Von Fuzz. Today they saw a speckled crone which shrieked while eating flies, and then a frazzled war ho hog eating kid and kidney pies. The long-beaked harpy does this trick with eels, you've got to see. The middle witch witch watchers spotted one while having tea. When evening came and nighttime spilled its ink across the sky, the middle witch witch watchers packed their things and waved goodbye. But then, by chance, they glanced upon the rarest witch of all. A rooty, a ruby-throated cackler. Look, her hat is six feet tall. Quiet now, and listen to her sweet, alluring call. Cackety-cack and jiggity-jig, sit on a monkey and snack on a pig. Hickety-diggity, cackety-coo, cackety-cockle-a-doodle-a-doo. An open letter from Wolfman's best friend. Dear Wolfman, I wanted to make some things clear. I know we've been roommates for nearly a year, and I probably should have said something before, but could you please try not to scratch the front door? If you want to come in, you should just use your keys, and if you forget them, then please, Wolfman, please just knock, and I'll happily open the door. 
And if I'm not home, please don't howl anymore, because each time you do it, the neighbors complain. And since we're complaining, perhaps you'd explain how much you manage to leave so much hair in the tub. I constantly clean it, I scour, I scrub, and I think I should mention it's really a pain. Today I removed a big clog from the drain, and I tell you, this hair clog was of such a size it could go to a cat show and take home first prize. So, anyways, that's all I wanted to write. Please take out the garbage, it's your turn tonight. And thank you. Sincerely, your dog, Dynamite. The Invisible Man gets a haircut. My hair is a fright, said Griffin one night, or at least I assume that it is. It feels awfully long, and the part is all wrong, and it's knotted and tangled in with frizz. An invisible ne'er-do-well's hairdo will scare you, no matter how well you cut hair. The barber, downhearted, got, took aim and got started, and the whole thing went downhill from there. Said Griffin, oh my, that's your thumb in my eye, and my nostril's no place for a comb. Oh dear, where's my ear? Well, I knew it was here on my head when I checked it at home. He shouted, enough, you're being too rough. And then Griffin jumped out of the chair. So invisible man wears a visible hat to conceal his invisible hair. Now, if you'd like to see, there's actually more stories hidden in this picture. So it says over here, this first guy, of course, galloped up on a horse, and his face fills the barber with fear. He has not a head, but a pumpkin instead, and the barber can't tell why he's here. The man next to him wants a shave and a trim, and but he so he has to be some kind of nut. The fella's a ghost, so his hair at the most can be seen, but not possibly cut. The gal at the door has been in here before. Her hair ate his best pair of shears. And the one in the chair says she's sick of her hair and she wants it like Brittany Spears. Hmm. The Phantom of the Opera still can't get It's a Small World out of his head. It's a small world after all. 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 Count Dracula doesn't know he's been walking around all night with spinach in his teeth. Will somebody please just tell him? It looks so undignified. The zombies almost mention it. The headless horseman tried, but when he said, What are you staring at? They lost their nerve and lied. It's been stuck in there for hours now. It's getting kind of sick. I would offer him a toothpick, but he gets this nervous tick if you ever come too close to him with any kind of pointed stick. Well, really, can you blame us if we don't know what to say? His castle has no mirror, so I guess it's there to stay. What was a vampire doing eating spinach, anyway? The mummy won't go to his eternal rest without a story and some cookies. There's a place in France where the naked ladies dance, but when King Tut died, he wore bandages for pants. And he'll never, never go to sleep. No, he will never, never go to sleep, oh! It's time for bed, all the royal servants said. Mummy played on the floor and he wailed, five minutes more. Here his new excuse, he wants cookies with his juice, but he won't get far, that's his stomach in that jar. Now he wants to read, so the scare scribes must do the deed. They make groaning sounds because the books weigh 30 pounds. And they say, you're dead, you've got to go to bed. But he runs to the tombs and he hides in secret rooms. The Yeti doesn't appreciate being called Bigfoot. Did you just say Bigfoot? What's wrong with your eyes? My feet aren't remotely as big as that guy's. Nor are they as smelly. You see, here's the truth. Some folks call him Sasquatch. His real name is Ruth. So, well, then why is it Bigfoot the name people mention? The smell, not the size, is what gets their attention. His nose is big too, but does anyone care? Perhaps if they smelled, they would be more aware. Well, of course his nose smells, but you know what I meant. You can bet he's no Yeti by the way of his scent. 
The Phantom of the Opera can't get Pop Goes the Weasel out of his head. He's going to freak out! All around the opera house, the Phantom throws a tantrum. The song won't die, he doesn't know why. Stop! Goes the Phantom. The Lunch Sack of Notre Dame. I'm stumped as to why we all lump this poor chump with the rest of the monsters just because of his hump. It's not like he drains all the blood from your veins or sucks out your brains and then eats your remains. I bet when he packs all those brown paper sacks and he takes them for lunch, breakfast, dinner, or brunch that he'll munch, snack, and chew on the same food as you. <laughs> just a hunch. Mitchell and Von Fuzz say, it's well known that zombies abstain from any food other than brain. Make a hat from a carrot and constantly wear it. They'll never disturb you again. Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Henderson. The doctor sighed. His tie was tied. He fiddled with his combs. He hated all these dressy balls in crowded halls and homes. He couldn't dance. He found the fancy food just made him choke, and guests would, would heckle Jekyll if he tried to make a joke. The clock began to chime. The time was eight. He was late. He'd rather go to bed instead of going out, but wait. The notion of a certain potion filled him with delight. Why stay inside when Mr. Hyde could go out for the night? Sure, Hyde was snide. He always lied, and women cried to see him. And yet it still was such a thrill when Jekyll got to be him. You should see him dance the polka. Fancy folk avoid his feet and he, as he reels and whirls the girls around the hall and down the street. He laughed and mixed the draft that makes a gentleman a jerk and thought a lot about the ball, but not about his work. T'was all his fault he added salt instead of crumbled skull. The vial of bile was pickle juice and dill just made it dull. Alas, the glass of cream of evil mixed with powdered creep was really milk the maid had laid aside to help him sleep. He never knew he drank the brew while running out the door, although he thought the beaker tasted weaker than before. He reached the ball and looked in all the mirrors at his head. It wasn't Hyde he spied, but Henderson instead. His shoulders stooped, his eyelids drooped, his face looked pooped and wan. And where his hair of hide was fried, his hair looked plastered on. What's done is done, sighed Henderson, and went to join the rest. Around the floor he stopped to bore the pants off every guest. He told a stale and endless tale that tested their endurance, topped with that with pictures of his cat, then sold them all insurance. For Henderson possessed one-tenth the zest that Jekyll had, Far less, in fact, he lacked the personality of plaid. The guests professed they needed rest. They had an early morn. They couldn't stay. They edged away, but then, without a warning, the way was blocked, the exit locked, with Henderson in her head. O cruel in you I, he held the key, and we, he held the key, and wearily he said, You know... The sight of all you people trying to get away has made me mindful of a funny yarn I read the other day. And when I mention yarn, you know, I really mean to say I read a story. Not a yarn in any woolly sort of way, although I think we'd all agree that yarn is thrilling, huh? I'd listen to a yarn about some yarn most any day. Um, alas, that's not funny yarn I'm trying to convey. This tale is funny strange, not funny haha -ha, by the way. It seems a certain donkey living out in Santa Fe was made to toil the day away by pulling cargo into Dre. A Dre's a sort of cart, you know. This one was filled with hay, but that's not really relevant. The thing I want to say about the donkey in particular looking rather smart and gay, owing mostly to the fact he wore a polka dot beret. And if any fellow tried to take the donkey's hat away, then the ass, uh, that is, the donkey, would get very cross and nay. Wait. Horses neigh, not donkeys. What I mean to say is bray. He would bray, not neigh, if someone took away his polka dot beret, which reminds me of an anecdote I heard a milkman say. Zombie Zombie Zoo Zombie? Zombie Zombie? Zombie! Samba Zombie Samba, Zombie Samba, Zombie Mamba. 
Mamba Mambo Zombie Zoo. Roomba Roomba Zombie Samba. Zombie Zimbi Bambi Boo. Zombie Biza Bambi Zamba. Bumba Zumba Zombie B. B? 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 Bump. Zombie Zombie. <clears throat> Now the Phantom of the Opera can't get the girl of from Ipanema out of his head. Bald and pale and masked and ugly, the Phantom of the Opera's writing. But when he knows that he can't compose, he goes... Aah! Every song comes out to Samba, although he runs to write an aria. So his top blows and he tears his clothes and goes... Aah! The Dentist. Poor son of Dracula, he's just a dud. His daddy is famous, but his name is Mud. For how much blood could a bloodsucker suck if a bloodsucker can't suck blood? Ahem. Everything's fine if he sucks on the throat of a dog or a hog or a cat or a goat, but a cold-blooded thing like a lizard or snake make his head start to hurt and his fangs really ache. Franken Jr. was shocked. You'll have to go see the worst monster of all. She's much worse than me. Her fingers are hooks. Hooks, needles, and spears. Her voice is a high buzzing whine in your ears. Instead of a head, there's a big glowing eye, the Franken boy said with a shuddering sigh. She doesn't sound scary, said Dracula's son. Not scary like crosses or stakes or the sun. So he made his appointment for just after dark at the New Transylvania Medical Park. It's awful, he whispered. So cheery and bright. You'd think it would kill them to turn off a light? They need some nice coffins. It's really a shame, young Dracula said as the nurse called his name. He followed inside and before he could hide, the dentist was standing there right by his side. A note to the timid or just faint of heart. The story has come to the frightening part. Stop reading. Now put the book down. This is scary. Peligro. Use caution. Beware and be wary. Still here? Very well. Little Drax stood in terror. He knew now he'd made the most horrible error. If he weren't undead, he'd have wanted to die. She was terrible, awful. She smiled and said, hi. Her voice was a sweet lilting song in his ears. Her fingers were fingers, not needles or spears. That big glowing eye was a lamp, not a head. It was all so much worse than the Franken boy said. Young Drac couldn't move, so she forced him to sit. Open wide now, she told him. This won't hurt a bit. You aren't flossing, she scolded, and Dracula blushed. And honestly, when was the last time that you brushed? You really must brush after every bite. See, a cavity's formed in this fang on the right. It needs to be mended, and so, if you're willing, I'll patch it right up with a small silver filling. A filling with silver? Drac wanted to shout. The werewolves will hate me. I've got to get out. He changed to a bat. He flew up and away. The dentist said, fine, we won't do it today, but get it fixed soon. You'll be glad that you did. Now here, take a sucker. You've been a good kid. He flew from the office and homeward he raced. He sucked on the sucker, but gagged on the taste. He'd hoped it was flavored like blood or like liver. How scary, it's cherry, he thought with a shiver. Drac knew it was true as he spat and he cursed. My dad may be dead, but the dentist's the worst. The Phantom of the Opera is considering giving up music and doing his haunting somewhere else. There was a phantom had a song and bingo was its name. O C B I N G O C I told you so. B I N G O by Jingo, what a lame o. It bugged the phantom all night long, he never was the same Oh, His cheeks don't show, if they did though We'd see them glow, flamingo pink with shame Oh, At least the phantom knows it's wrong, it caused him to proclaim Oh, I have no, no peace and so I'll just go and haunt a bingo game Oh. <clears throat> Bigfoot can't believe you called him Yeti just now. 
Wait, what did you say? The Yeti? No way! I know that I'm going a little bit gray, though I'm told I all the time I can still pass for 30. But Yeti's all white, except when he's dirty. And man, is he dirty! You might as well know the Yeti is sweaty despite all the snow. They call him abominable for a reason. That snowman's B.O. man in every season! Hey, sorry I shouted. You gave me a fright. You don't think we're that similar, right? Godzilla pooped on my Honda. Don't ever go to Tokyo. I just heard on the radio that Ghidorah had taken wing to fight some sort of turtle thing. And as the monster flew away, they saw a zipper plain as day. It seems perhaps these giant brutes are giant men in suits. I swear I'm leaving Tokyo. I watched as, just a week ago, some robots crushed my mailbox flat, and only two days after that, a moth, moth the size of Fuji goes and chews up all my Sunday clothes. I bought a mothball from the store. It won't fit through the door. And just last night, what did I see? Turdzilla, where my car should be. It's not so bad. I'm sure some dupe will pay for real Godzilla poop. I'll make a sign, or better yet, I'll sell it on the internet. And then when I've made enough, I'll go to any place but Tokyo. What is she saying there? <laughs> and there we have it. Frankenstein makes a sandwich. And other stories you're sure to like because they're about monsters and some are also about food. You like food, don't you? Well, all right then, by Adam Rex. So there you go.